We've had a lot of bad news recently, but today we start with good news, inspiring news, a heartwarming tale of passion, exploration, and self-discovery. Yes, we're talking about coming out of the closet, an important and emotional time in one's life where you reveal to the world what type of genitals you enjoy interacting with the most. Do you like the ding-a-ling or do you like the hoo-ha? Which one do you have and where do you want to put it? Please tell me more about your decision-making process because I certainly need as much detail as humanly possible. Tonight's most sincere congratulations though, go out to Nabisco's Oreo cookies. Mm -hmm. Yes, these cookies are totally gay. That's right, Oreos have come out of the closet with their limited edition Oreo Pride Pack, which is apparently so limited, my staff couldn't actually be bothered to find them in any grocery store. Let's take a deeper look. You're too beautiful to hide. I'll march with you. To be exactly who you are. The world needs more of that. Thank you for being here. I wish you love, peace, and life. You are love. Oh, wow, that was beautiful. Yes, the sexual preference of this cookie was just too beautiful to hide from the world. But now we know that this cookie is gay. Incredibly gay. Deliciously gay. Oreo cookies, the gayest cookie in the land. Proudly gay and gayly proud. Gay Oreo cookies are the only sandwich cookie standing up for their values. And by standing up for their values, I of course mean shamelessly co-opting a feel-good woke cause to manipulate consumers into buying overpriced bags of sugar bombs that will only make America's obesity problem worse, which arguably hurts the gay community because gay people have fewer gay people that are in shape to date. But. Look, that's been the mission, uh, really, for generations over at Oreo, creating more fat gay people. It's what they're about. And these gayest of all cookies are succeeding in their mission. So next time you think about Oreo cookies, think about two cookies with the same genitals. Think about them making sweet, tender love together. Think about a Toy Story situation where you turn out the lights and walk out of the room and the cookies just come alive and have a big, Oreo orgy, uh, an Oreo orgy. So whether you're straight or gay, trans or trans fat, take pride. After all, it's Pride Month, the only month of our calendar named after one of the seven deadly sins. And then take pride as you picture an Oreo cookie absolutely tearing up another Oreo co <laughs> cookie. <laughs> I mean, it's, uh, to be honest, it's pretty hot when you think about it. Congratulations, Oreo. Taking pride in being the gayest cookie you have ever pictured having gay cookie sex. No show on Fox News is starting like that tonight. BlazeTV.com slash stew is the place to go to subscribe to Blaze TV. The promo code is debunked. Why? Because we're gonna be spending Friday debunking the biggest gun myths on the left. You could save 20 bucks with that promo code. Do it right now. Just go, subscribe, give in to all of your carnal urges and join Blaze TV. Glenn Beck finally, of course, reveals his thoughts on the new Obi-Wan Kenobi show. You don't want to miss that at all. We'll take a look at what particular states think of the job President Biden is doing, which implies there is a job that Pri President Biden is doing. I don't know if that's actually true, but we start by doing corporate virtue signaling. Yes, it is that time of the year. I know you're excited. Your entire social media feed for the next month is going to be filled with rainbows. That might be exciting for you if you if you like unicorns or you're a toddler or a child or if you happen to be very proud of your sexuality. I look at me. 
not proud of it at all. I mean, it's honestly revolting to almost everybody, but I don't sit here and talk about it all the time because I'd like you to tune in and not be uh, disgusted. <laughs> Look, we all know what this is, right? Pride Month is a situation where maybe there's somebody out there who thinks this is the, the best idea in the world. Maybe there's somebody out there who thinks, you know, it's great that we recognize LGBTQ. QIA2 plus individuals. And look, you know, everybody in this country, I, you live in America, everybody in this country gets the same rights. That's the way this is supposed to be designed. Nobody should, should not be able to live the lives that they want to live. We all know that. But like, can we please get past the virtue signaling here? Every corporation now thinks it needs to make a statement on who is having sex with who. When did we say we wanted this? Does anybody actually want it? The gayest man in the universe does not need every single, like the relish they use to make a statement about gay rights or a gay flag or anything else. I mean, look, let me give you a few examples. This one from NASCAR made the rounds today as we celebrate the LGBTQ plus. Where is the QIA? Two in that. I mean, these people hate. Uh, as we celebrate the community, we acknowledge that recent actions have not aligned with NASCAR's mission to be welcoming uh, a welcoming sport for all. We remain steadfast in our commitment to create a more inclusive environment in our workplaces, at the racetrack, and in the stands. What did these? What did NASCAR do? Did they? Did they like take one of their NASCARs and roll over a bunch of people at a gay pride parade? What happened? What incident was this? Apparently, it was like. Greg Abbott was at a race. And I guess that's... Who, who, do they, who does NASCAR think their audience is? I, I don't understand it. We also have the Indianapolis Colts, also gay. Yes. Gay, 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 gay. All the gay hearts and Colts of rainbow cult uh, symbol. Uh, I, I guess if you're an Indianapolis Colts fan... You can be proudly gay today, as I know I am, as a fan of America's team, the Toronto Blue Jays, who bring you this message, celebrating love. Happy Pride Month, Blue Jays fans, and they've got a rainbow, sort of a, it's not really a rainbow, is that the uh, gay pride rainbow, the new one? I don't know. There's a new one, remember they designed a new rainbow flag because I guess the old rainbow didn't have enough colors or something? I don't know. I don't know why. Companies do this for one reason. Because if they don't do it, do it, it looks like they don't like gay people. And, of course, companies don't like or dislike gay people. They just want your money. That's what they want. They want to take your money. They will take the gayest money possible. If you have gay money, if you have lesbian money, if you have trans money, all these companies want it. Are we surprised by that at all? No. I am not. I don't think anybody else is, but they make these statements because they feel like they have to. They feel like this is going to endear them to the community. But I don't know. You know, the, the gay people that I know seem to be like regular people who see right through this crap. Right. Like, I mean, I know there's activists out there that demand this, but the average gay person does not need a message from NASCAR telling them how gay they are. I promise you, they certainly don't need it from Oreos. Uh, and this is a bigger issue than just this particular month, which this will be constant this month. Constant. Be prideful, which I, at one point we were advised against doing, I'm pretty sure. Just pride in anything was supposed to be bad, but now we're just going to celebrate it for a month. I love this particular headline from the Wall Street Journal. Does your mayo need a mission statement? Yes, Hellman's wants to come to you and tell you all of the important things Hellman's stands for. Not creamy, delicious mayonnaise. No, they have a cause. They want to present you with a cause. And this goes all the way, pretty much every single product, in particular, from Unilever. Unilever, obviously, giant company. They make basically every product that you use. And they have a, a, a leadership in place that decided, you know, making really good mayonnaise is not good enough for Hellman's. Hellman's needs to have a, a, a corporate mission statement that shows everyone how much they care about things other than mayonnaise. So 
they had to come up with something. Listen to this. The brands with purpose strategy has become a centerpiece for Unilever since Alan Jope took over as chief executive in 2019. The Scottish marketeer defines purpose as having a point of view on issues important to the planet or society. No, make mayonnaise. He has said that the UK-based company could sell brands for which it can't identify a mission. And this is something that's interesting because, you know, there's a lot of marketing books around that talk about this, this exact idea. We read one around here. And look, we are clearly a mission-based company, right? I mean, obviously, we're not just, I mean, look at this. They're not hiring attractive hosts, at least some of them. Um, look at me, you know. Uh, I'm a guy who's eating Oreos on camera. This is not exactly, it's, it's not done for the visual appeal. It's done because we believe in something here. The Blaze is a mission-focused company. Even something like Patagonium, which is an example used in one of these famous uh, mich- uh, marketing books, says, hey, Patagonia may or may not be a really good, you know, outdoors brand. Some of their stuff's really good. Maybe some of it you don't like. But the bottom line is they're not selling you the gear. They're selling you the vision. They're selling you the idea of being one with nature, of being good with the environment, of, of, you know, climate. You know, look at look at those in shape people. They're they're climbing to the top of a mountain and they look pretty cool doing it. You should put on on the same jacket when you go to your accounting office. That's kind of the idea that they're doing, but like it kind of makes sense with Patagonia, right? Like they're selling a lifestyle, okay? Hellman's, the lifestyle Hellman's is selling is constant heart surgery. That's the, that's the lifestyle Hellman's is bringing to you. They don't need to be a mission statement company. That is not what needs to happen. We don't need more of your opinions, food products. Do you understand? Some of these are just hilarious. Ice cream brand Walls, originally from England, says it's committed to raising national happiness levels. Nobody can be grumpy while eating ice cream, its website notes. Think of how transparent and pathetic this is. A corporate directive comes out and says, hey, ice cream company, come up with something that sounds like a mission statement. Oh, uh, ice cream makes people happy. How about this one? Nor, a 150-year-old brand best known for its bouillon cubes, <laughs> now wants people to diversify their diets with more plant-based foods, such as white icicle radish and an Ethiopian grain called teff, which sounds delicious, for better nutrition and less environmental Impact. Yes, if you have bouillon cubes around, just let you know they want you to eat radishes and teff. And Vaseline, Vaseline petroleum jelly is helping refugees suffering from skin problems. Dove has successfully helped push for laws to prohibit discrimination against people based on their hair texture or style. Let's uh, watch a little sampling of the mission statement of Vaseline. An ordinary jar of Vaseline jelly. It's something we all keep somewhere, and we probably don't think about it much, except when we've got chapped lips, or dry skin, or a small cut. But for people living in areas of crisis and disaster, here the simplest skin conditions can turn into serious issues that make it hard to do the most basic everyday things. So we created the Vaseline Healing Project, a partnership with Direct Relief to help millions in need heal their skin. Mm -hmm. By providing them a jar, or a kit, or a doctor's hands. Because the same thing that helps heal your dry skin can help others get to work, and go to school, and get back to everyday life. Mm. And that ordinary jar can make an extraordinary difference. Wow. That's wow. I got to say I'm relieved on that one because uh, Vaseline and Pride Month, it could have gone a totally different direction, and I'm glad it didn't. Look, if you want to give away free jars of Vaseline, just do it. It's okay. You don't need to sit here and brag to us about it all the time. Look, the truth is my condiments don't need a mission statement. My cookies don't need to tell me their sexual preference, what they need to do is taste good. I don't want this weird ESG score filled world where I am lectured about wrong think from a Kit Kat bar. What I want you to do is combine sugar and fat and salt in various ways and then shovel it down my gullet. That's it. 
make more flavors and fewer statements. Coming up next, cookie connoisseur, Glenn Beck. Fear of out-of-control inflation is hammering the stock market. The S&P 500 is having its worst start to the year since World War II. So not only are your savings worth less, you now have less of it. Now might be a good time for you to diversify into gold, the most stable asset in the history of the world. And Birch Gold is the company that I talk about all the time to help you convert an IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold and silver. Uh, not only will Birch Gold help you fortify your savings with precious metals, they'll help you do it in a tax-sheltered account. All you got to do is text STU to 989898 to get started. S-T-U, that's my name, STU, to 989898. Amazon stock is down 37% in the first half of the year. Tesla is down 40%. Cryptos have been slammed. Many fear the hawkish moves by the Fed could stall the economy. What's your plan to deal with it? Text STU to 989898 and get your free, no obligation info kit on gold from Birch Gold. They are precious uh, metals uh, professionals and they know what they're talking about here. Text STU to 989898 and secure your savings now. It's STU to 989898. Nine eight. I'm joined once again by Glenn Beck. Yeah, yeah people know. So new special. Let's, no, let's as please. Tonight, it's it's called famine and blackouts. How Biden's man-made disasters will cripple America. Glenn, hey, you're bringing this up on, you know, Gay Pride Day or I think transitional it's the, Pride Day or just Pride Day. Just Pride. It doesn't matter what you're prideful in. We know. No. Sure, you it was one of the a, seven deadly sins. But yeah. just be prideful of something. Yes. You know? Yes. And I I have to tell you, the bravery of Disney <laughs> yeah. to come out, because mm. um, they've always done princesses, you mm -hmm. know? And the queens have always been evil. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. uh, but the queens that they have on now, they're not evil. No. They're good. They're good queens. Yeah. Now, they're a different yeah. kind of queen. Right. <laughs> so there's a, I've noticed some difference in the patterns of, let's say, facial hair. Right. These particular queens. Queens. Queens with weenies. <laughs> there you go. I, I saw, no, I thought there was a barbecue behind one of them. I thought they were having oh, okay. hot dogs and okay. hamburgers. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. I oh, I yeah. Misunderstood. yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you make of this, by the way? We have not talked about this at all. We didn't get a chance to talk about it on radio today. But what do you make of this bizarre Star Wars controversy? Have you followed this at all? So I saw it last night, and I, you know, I care so little now about Star Wars. Oh, you know, gosh, I... I feel the same way. I, All you right, know, good. I, so let's sad. have an uninformed conversation. Well, I can about tell you this. just the, on the basic outline of the story. Yeah. You know, we know Gina Carano gets yeah. fired because she has a political view. Correct. She, and they have. She gets all sorts of death threats, rape threats, all sorts of stuff online. They don't. It yeah, but she's wrong, one. so it's okay. Yeah, right. She has the wrong view, so right. she, it's okay. So they don't say word one about it. Then they release this Kenobi series, which I don't know, like. I had a mild bit of interest of watching. Mm. Like, I like Star Wars generally. I'm not into every series, but like, I, I was like, ah, maybe I like I'll watch Ian this. McGregor or Ewan McGregor right. or whatever his name is. I was like, hey, maybe. And I'll I like him out. that much that I'm not really sure what his name yeah, is. Yeah, it's you a very I mean? slight amount. Right. So then the first thing I see about the series uh -huh. is a post from Star Wars, the main account, that says, hey, don't be racist to this new character we have. And like, it's because I guess it's a black woman who's playing a villain role in the, in the show, apparently. And they're like, hey, we know, you guys, we know what you guys are like. So don't be racist because we put a black character in our show. Unbelievable. <laughs> right? Unbelievable. That's what they think yeah. of their audience. Of their own audience. And so I guess... Oh, uh, my gosh. Now, I guess, because uh, I hadn't... Heard word one about she's anyone's. not really black, right? No, she really is. It's not just a character. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, so, you could have uh, led. I know. Led I should have led that. with that because yeah. obviously now you <laughs> now are I'm very not, upset about now it. Now I'm very upset. Uh, not my, an actual black person. My understanding of Lando Calrissian back in the day, like, there's been a history yeah. of black characters on the yeah. show that uh -huh. I don't think have. 
Maybe they have taken I don't racial know. abuse. I haven't heard Even that. Even the guy who does, I am your father, is black. I, yeah. <laughs> it's black. Now, people didn't like Darth Vader right. at times because right. he was, you know, doing really but bad things to the universe. But you still like James Earl Ray or whatever <laughs> his name. No, you don't like James Earl Ray. You like oh, James yeah. Earl Jones. They're two he people. was the shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Beck, fan of James Earl Ray right. here on the program. No, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> so <laughs> they go through this whole thing where they harangue their own audience. I for, really have to start caring about <laughs> things <laughs> before I go on the air. I just, you know, people are like, what do they like to hang out with? This, this, is this. It. you know, without a producer or Google, we're just everywhere. Yeah, we're just anyway. everywhere. Okay, so they come out and they say the statement, hey, ra- hey, racist Star Wars fans, don't be yourselves. And uh, I, guess, I guess then they have, there is, like, I, she apparently got some messages online. Now, of course, as you may be aware, Glenn, people may not in the... <laughs> In the public eye, occasionally do get negative feedback from their audience on social media. I know this has never really? happened to that's, you. That's new. This is that's new, new to you. Yeah. Um, they don't care about any of that feedback. They didn't care about it with Gina Carano, their other employee. They care about it so much. Now they've posted a, a message from Ewan McGregor or whatever his name is <laughs> yeah. about how racist Star Wars fans are. And it's like... What is this? Like, I can't. What kind of promotion <laughs> is this? I don't know. And I will say, I ha- so I have a friend. The studio who- system is definitely dead. Right. Because they used to put poor stories out about how great <laughs> the great fans they were. are. Yes. Yeah. No. And how great the stars are. Now it's like, screw you. <laughs> Give me my 10 bucks. <laughs> you racist. <laughs> you racist. Give me your racist money. Oh, my God. So now I have a friend who, who's watching the series. He's like, you know, it's okay. And as I was watching it, I thought to myself, you know, this character, the black woman, is kind of the weak part of the show. It's like, you know, it's, it's she's not that great. But I, his theory was they went, wanted to get out in front of how bad she was by claiming the racism so that you can't criticize it. You can no longer say the series sucks because they are. They say they've premeditated an attack on you that it's racism. Can I tell you something? I... I watched it, maybe it was late at night. My son was like, Dad, 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 yeah. Dad, bro. Uh, mm-hmm. And I watched it and I noticed she was black, but not for any reason <laughs> other than eyes, you so. know, you're like, oh, the black character, you know, she's the first. And I was like, oh. Yeah, okay, she's black. I didn't even notice she was a bad <laughs> actress. <laughs> maybe because I expect so little mm. from Disney. But so now they're calling me a racist and telegraphing, and she sucks as an actress. Right. What kind of? It's so bizarre. Wouldn't it have been smart, though? Go back to the prequels. Right before the Jar Jar Binks thing comes out, they just say, by the way, don't be racist against Jar Jar Binks. We know who you are. Then anyone who criticized Jar Jar Binks would be racist, and so people would be terrified to do it. So they get kicked off of social media and lose their jobs. This is a good strategy for Disney. This is unbelievable. <laughs> they just haven't learned a damn thing. I know. I, I mean, really look sad. at how much money they have lost. And you know me. I'm not a boycotter at yeah. all. But, like, you get to a point where I'm not going to, like, I'm not going to make a big deal. I'm not going to boycott it. I'm not going to start some national movement to not watch Star Wars. I just don't feel interested in watching Star Wars anymore. They've literally talked me out of my interest in the show because they make it about all this nonsense all the time. That's uh, that's incredible. I, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's really too bad. I did tell my kids, my kids asked, are we ever going to go back to Disney? And I'm like, you're 17. No. <laughs> uh, but, but they wanted to go back to one of the parks, and I'm like, no, we're not going back to Disney. And I'm not a... I, I'm not a boycotter. I, I Most of the time you're not. Yeah, I mean... Uh, I can't get away from these companies. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's hard. Because like 18 companies own <laughs> 50% really of yeah. the products you use. So you just can't get away from them. But I'm not going to go drop a load of money at a Disney park. Not not going to do it. Yeah. And I love Disney parks. But I can't I just can't bring myself First of all, I don't think Walt would spend a dollar in a Disney park at this mm. point. Yeah, no, I think you're right. I think too, it's it's like it's one thing to take a to st- like to try to to boycott something. It's another thing, just like 
there's a cost benefit analysis that comes into every spending yeah. decision. And it's like, if I'm not going to get enjoyment, if I'm going to be there and all I'm thinking about is all the, everybody, the agenda of every single thing there, I'm not going to enjoy my trip. Right. Like, you just, it's, no, it's a waste. Correct. Yeah. And I think that with, like, I, I didn't think of anything, I didn't think pro American thoughts, anti American thoughts, Hollywood thoughts. All I thought was, Damn, Tom Cruise still looks good for that age. You know what I mean? I just enjoyed the movie. Yeah. Just enjoyed the movie. And, you know, maybe there was some pro-America in there. Like, I mean, it was certainly very patri- a patriotic feel to the movie. But that, I, that was okay. Isn't that okay? So that, that, that felt good to me watching Top Gun. Just because, not because it was all, it was a good movie. It was a spectacular movie, you know, in, a, in that, you know, spectacle sort but of way. But we didn't even know who the bad guys were. I know, I know. We, I mean, usually it would always fall back to the Russians. Yeah. Terrorism, the world is being f- f- set on fire by people in the Middle East, and it's a white Russian in every movie. Yes. You know what I mean? Always controlling. Right. The, the this strings. time, we didn't even get the Russian. No. We got nothing. <laughs> nothing. It's like, they've got a base, <laughs> and it's somewhere by an ocean or a sea or something <laughs> we can get an aircraft carrier right around. That's it. <laughs> They're an enemy of some sort. Right, that's all right. we know. Um, can we switch gears quickly here before? Because yeah. that's not at all what I was going to talk to you about. But uh, we have the the, the Texas situation. Um, we now have some Republicans who look. They just want to get some common sense, uh, common ground gun reform done. Man. This is a time I'm regretting my Christianity. <laughs> wow. Because I have a few things to say. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you have any, because there's, there's a bit of a debate in that, are, are, are Republicans really trying to come up with new gun control measures, or are they just saying... John Cornyn is there, yes! They're not just signaling, hey, we no. want to show we're part of the solution, and then they're going to no, bail out? These, you think that Mitch McConnell gives a fly-in crap, really, about the Second Amendment? Really? Do you? I don't think so. John Cornyn, he's been off the reservation. He's a Texas senator. Honestly, I saw that the other day and I thought, I'm running. I'm running. (laughs) And I have no chance of winning, (laughs) but I'm running against that guy. It's crazy. Cornyn is, in an underrated way, one of the worst senators in America. And and I mean that because in the same way Lindsey Graham is a really bad senator. Like yeah. Lindsey Graham is not the worst senator in the Senate if you're looking at pure results. But he but they're he's the in worst South Carolina. Because they're in South Carolina right. and Texas. In Texas. Like we I mean how t- can this guy it's like having Beto? Yeah. It, it really is frustrating. Like I, and and yet incumbency seems to protect him every time a primary comes along. No one will challenge him. No strong contender goes up against him. And he just keeps, because of his power, keeps rolling in through office. I, you know, I think the average Texan you know, doesn't give much thought to how conservative he is. It's what just, do you have not, to live to run for his? Can I live in Dallas or do I have to no, live you can, like it's in Houston? Anywhere in the state. Anywhere in the state. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't. No, I'm just saying. Are you... No, it's I'd a big hire pay somebody. cut, you do realize. No, I know that. I'd mm-hmm. hire somebody to do all that. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You just do the speeches? I just do the speeches. Mm. I'd be good at doing speeches, bad at all the decisions and, you know, the senatorial oh, stuff. Oh, yeah, really bad. You know, really bad. <laughs> um, but I, I do want to, on this last... I just... I'll, I'll help. Somebody can run as an independent, right? Mm-hmm. And they'll go... Cornyn, Beck's right about Cornyn, but Beck's crazy, so we can't vote for either of those guys now. So put a good candidate as an independent, and Mm -hmm. then you would also run. This is your strategy. Yeah. Well, if you happen (laughs) to be a good independent, and you're looking for a new job opportunity, (laughs) you're going to take Glenn Beck up on his offer. Um, Also, you can watch watch his special tonight. That might be a good idea. We didn't talk about it at all. It's called Family. It's really really an important special. And scary. I mean, this is... uh, Because... They have, you know, we all know the ESG and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. These are all end runs around the Constitution. You want to get around freedom of speech? Just have your friends in, in, uh, in social media. Just start banning things that you want. Okay? End run around the Constitution. Mm-hmm. Stu, we'll show you tonight documents that show that uh, this is an all-government directive. And they're all gearing up for what can be done during an emergency and they're creating the emergency they're creating it i I think we're headed for a a 
scary six months because when the food and the gas get to where they're going to be in September, I don't know how average person is, and I don't mean like lower class, I mean middle income. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they're going to be able to survive. We're already seeing gas in some places in the country at $8 a gallon now. $8 a gallon. I, I'm telling you, the average person will pay between six and seven by the <sighs> end of summer. Six or seven dollars a gallon. We're almost a five nationwide average right now. Now, try to, to I gave you what the USDA said about uh, food prices. They just said, what was it, 20 percent? They're talking about next fall, an egg will be a dollar. A dozen eggs will be twelve dollars. Mm. Uh, how do you survive? They are destroying everything. They've destroyed our history. They've destroyed our families. They've destroyed our churches. They've destroyed everything. And now they're going to destroy your dollar. They're going to take everything. You'll own nothing and you'll like it. Mm. Glenn Beck, the new special is Famine and Blackouts, How Biden-Made Disasters Will Cripple America. It is coming up next here on Blaze TV, 9 p.m. Eastern. Don't miss it, blazetv.com slash stew. The promo code is stew, and you'll save 10 bucks. Glenn, thanks for coming on. Thank you. It's getting close, boys and girls. This Friday, June 3rd, we're doing a huge special episode debunking the biggest and most idiotic myths about guns propagated by the left, especially over the past week or so. It's been, it's really been irritating. And I have grown very sick of trying to get people to understand the information that's out there. They don't want to look for it. So I decided to put it all in one place. Just for you, whenever you want to check it out, it's Stu Debunks Gun Myths, and we will be dropping it at our normal episode time. Uh, so set yourself a little watch reminder now, write it down on your calendar, put a reminder in your Palm Pilot, uh, and uh, make sure you check it out. Be and you're going to want to share this one. Um, and I, I, what I really want it to be, even more than that, is just something you refer back to. I can say, ah, I remember that was in that one episode. I can't remember all the details to it. Go back there. We'll show you all the details. We'll show you uh, the the back, you know, what it means and you know what information backs it up. All the research behind it, um, and I think you're really going to like it. Uh, we set up a kind of a special code for you to join right now, so you can take part, see everything you uh, you need to see. Uh, go to uh, blazetv.com/stew. You'll save twenty bucks on a Blaze TV subscription when you use this promo code. Debunked. Yes, we're debunking gun lies. So we're using the promo code DEBUNKED. It is a limited time deal. Don't miss out on your chance to save some cash and also watch this special and all the other great shows on Blaze TV. It's worth your time and money anyway. At least I hope you think it is. Uh, and I think this special will really put it over the top for you. If you haven't checked it out yet, if you've never been a Blaze TV subscriber, this is a great time to join. BlazeTV.com slash stew. The promo code is DEBUNKED. Save 20 bucks on your subscription. Back in a second. You know, buying or selling a home is already one of the most stressful things you can do. You know this. You've, if you've ever done, gone through this process before, you, it's, you're so nervous because you don't know the ins and outs of the paperwork and you don't know the ins and outs of the market. And you know, maybe you think you're getting a great price and then you realize the guy down the street sold it for more. You want to have all this information uh, in advance. And the only way you can really do that is by having a great real estate agent, the best real estate agent. Uh, this is one of our biggest investments that we'll ever make in our lives. And uh, you need to have an agent that's going to take that seriously. That's why I always recommend realestateagentsitrust.com. Start with something, right? A lot of times with real estate agents, we start from nothing. Maybe we start from a friend of a friend of a friend of a cousin's former brother roommate. Maybe we do that. Instead, Look for somebody who's been screened. Who's the best performing real estate agent in your area? I guarantee you they're on realestateagentsitrust.com. Check it out, realestateagentsitrust.com, realestateagentsitrust.com. You give them a little bit of info, they will walk you through the entire transaction, realestateagentsitrust.com. Stunning developments in the world of BLM. Yes, Black Lives Matter, the most popular and best organization ever created is not doing so well lately. Um, in fact, a new poll is out, and the support for the movement's goals have decreased from 48% down to 31% uh, 
from about a year ago. Meanwhile, the support for the movement's strategies and tactics has dropped from 40 percent to 31 percent. And this drop has happened also uh, among Amer uh, African-Americans themselves. Uh, it has dropped from 67 to 56 percent when it comes to the movement's goals and 65 to 49 percent when it comes to their tactics. And that's not a huge surprise. They're not the most, maybe they aren't the most popular organization in America. And maybe, maybe, follow me on this, Joe Biden isn't all that popular either. We told you about a new approval poll that has him at 34%, which is really, really bad. This is a civics uh, poll. And they break it down by state. I'm gonna give you some examples here. Alabama, 25%, Alaska, 31%. Arizona, 32. Arkansas, 25 percent. California, 42 percent. Um, let's see. Idaho, 23 percent. Indiana, 27 percent. Let me give you some purples, purplish states here. Florida, 34 percent approval. Georgia, 31 percent approval. Iowa, 30 percent approval. Uh, Michigan, 36 percent approval. Minnesota, 39 percent approval. I'd give you Missouri. Missouri is not really even a purple state anymore, is it? I don't think it is. Not with Joe Biden as president. Nevada, 33 percent. New Hampshire, 37 percent. North Carolina, 34. Ohio, 29. Uh, Pennsylvania, 34. Uh, geez. Uh, let's see any other interesting ones here. Wisconsin, 36 percent. Wyoming, 18. Uh, not so good. Only three states. He was uh, above water. Hawaii, he was up 50% approval, 40% disapproval. Massachusetts, 45, 42. And Vermont, 46, 38. 47 states underwater, three states above water. That is not, that's not the recipe for electoral success in the midterms. That's bad. Very bad, as Joe Biden would whisper. And why? Well, gas prices are at an all-time high. 467 a gallon. This is remarkable. I mean, the average price in the United States in just the next couple of weeks is probably going to be over five dollars a gallon. I don't think I, I, mean, I don't think anybody ever thought we'd see that for any extended period of time. Very well could happen. Janet Yellen has now coming out and she's saying, oh, yeah, by the way, that inflation thing, I kind of screwed that one up. She says I was wrong about the path inflation would take. And if you remember that path, she said it doesn't exist. And then it's not that bad. And then it's just transitory. And then it's going away soon. And then if we just spend some more money, everything will be great. And then holy crap, we're in trouble. That's basically the path that we've taken here. And she's now admitting that she was wrong. And all of this, of course, adds up to a Joe Biden 34% approval rating, which, as I might remind you, not good. But Joe Biden came out with an interesting op-ed. Yes, the president of the United States writing an op-ed. It does happen occasionally. It's pretty rare, but does happen occasionally. And Biden has one. It's, it's entitled What America Will and Will Not Do in Ukraine. And what's interesting about this is not necessarily the content of the op-ed. Uh, it's kind of a boilerplate. Hey, we're not going to get into a direct war with Russia, but we're going to do everything else we can basically to help Ukraine. And it's kind of what we knew what was going on. I will say this. We shouldn't be announcing everything we're doing with Ukraine in op-eds, in press conferences, in random comments as Joe Biden is walking into a 7-Eleven. None of these things should occur. OK, we shouldn't be talking about this all the time. Stop talking about it. Uh, it only gives you opportunities to screw things up. But this is an interesting new approach approach in the way that Joe Biden may govern in the future here while he's still president. And like, honestly, I think it's an improvement. Follow me on this. Joe Biden gets in front of cameras and he blurts things out all the time. He constantly goes down roads that he should not go down. He constantly undermines his own message. He constantly says things that are wrong and idiotic. I will tell you about half the special on Friday is just me going through claims that Joe Biden has made over the past few weeks about guns. He's made so many idiotic ones. I can't I can't move on to other people. He's just constantly screwing up and we have to constantly correct the guy. And. One of the interesting parts about this and this new approach from the administration's uh, perspective, it's really smart because, number one, you can give exclusives to these papers that give you flattering coverage like The New York Times constantly does. You can give them access. And again, this is 
um, not a good thing for the country, but it's a good thing for the Biden administration. You're going to get better coverage because you're giving access to these papers and they will do everything they can to get your op-ed in their paper instead of their competitors. So there's some smarts there. But more than anything else is, you know, you know Joe Biden isn't writing this. I mean, I don't even think he's reading it, right? I mean, some, some staffer is putting together a coherent uh, op-ed, kind of, something that while we might think is wrong, at least doesn't you know, blurt out squirrels in the middle of it. You know, squirrels! It doesn't say that in the middle of the op-ed anywhere. It's mildly coherent. Obviously, he didn't write it, but that's a really good thing for the administration to be doing. Have someone else write your opinions for you so you don't gaff us into World War III and then release it to a paper and then don't say a word about it afterward. Just walk by the cameras every single time, never answer a question so that we don't get into a nuclear war. Minor, minor request. I mean, they can't say anything. Even when they're trying to say cute little stories about the relationship between Joe Biden and Dr. Jill Biden, they can't get through it without setting off some sort of controversy. This one was from Jill. Uh, Jill uh, is in an uh, interview with a Harper's Bazaar, which is, I mean, if you want to talk about relevance, it's Harper's Bazaar. Um, and she's, you know, and this, the, the, she's 70 years old. She's talking to, about her husband, who's 79. And they occasionally have a fight uh, via text message, and she said they like to um, do this, and she described the act as fexting. Get it? Fighting plus texting. Well, you, you might not know, and I didn't know, and certainly Jill didn't know, that fexting means something de- very different. <laughs> does not mean fighting over text. In fact, no one's ever used it that way. It means something very sexual, something that I may have described Oreo cookies doing earlier in this particular episode. Uh, so, yeah. That's, even when they're trying to tell cute little stories about their relationship, they screw it up and make it some graphic horror show. So, the more op-eds from staffers, the better. Okay, so here's what happened. An old lady in a wheelchair, pulled up to look at some fine art, the Mona Lisa, and then we find out it was not an old lady, it's a man! And I'm not making some transgendered comment here, it actually was a man. A man was there to try to ruin the Mona Lisa, kind of, and decided to smear cake on the glass surrounding the Mona Lisa, which, I guess he thought would do something. I'm not exactly sure what. Um, And as he's leaving, he's being dragged out of there. He says, think of the planet. There are people who are destroying the planet. Think about that. That's why I did it. And I think now we can all understand how that relates to cake on the Mona Lisa. I I have have no idea. Uh, Let me give you some uh, comments. By the way, uh, make sure to follow and subscribe on all the uh, social media and YouTube and podcasts and everywhere you can. Uh, Some comments coming in on YouTube. Uh, That's how Jill, Dr. Jill does lung transplants. She just blows them out of the body with a nine millimeter. (laughs) That's, I don't know. I didn't know that. I guess that's true. I know Glenn pays you well, but honestly, you need to make twice what he's paying you just because you have to be with him every day. Just saying. And twice on Wednesdays, most times. Uh, Illegal Canadian immigration is about to be a thing. Yes, I think you're right. Any gun owners certainly are going to be coming across the border at any time. Um, Let me uh, tell you about what's coming up for the rest of the week. A couple of important things. Uh, Number one, the big gun special. It's coming up on Friday. Don't miss it. Debunking all the gun myths. If you have any that you want debunked and you want help with, maybe you don't feel like looking them up, maybe you just want to have something to refer back to over and over again, uh, send them to me. Twitter, Facebook, wherever you want. We're going to try to get to as many as we can in an hour. The definitive debunking of gun myths. It's on Friday show, a special show. Don't miss it. If you use the code debunked, you'll save 20 bucks off your subscription to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash stew. Promo code is debunked. Also, Stu does Power Hour. If you want to join us for a live Power Hour in studio, go there now. We'll see you tomorrow.